Here with NSU coach Brad Laird. Coach, um, this receiver group has, has really had an, an interesting journey, an interesting story. Um, Kendrick Price, he, uh, he was really coming on at the end of that 2019 season, starting the last four games. Spring practice, tears his ACL. Um, but now he's, he's had that extra time to, to kind of come full circle. What type of progress have you seen from him, uh, both on and off the field? Well, you know, you go, you look at Kendrick Price and, and where he's at. But, uh, you know, I think you always, you know, you talk about the journey and, and you, you want to reflect back where he was. Um, because I think that understanding where he was compared to where he is now makes this story even more uh, awesome. You know, he's, um, you know, you go back, uh, you know, we've, we've had many a conversations, uh, many, uh, many ups and downs. Uh, as we continue to move forward. And then, you know, you get to the point where you see him making strides like he did uh, towards the end of 2019, uh, becoming uh, the guy that we thought he would become. And you fast forward to the spring, it's, it's, it's going to be a breakout year for him and, and a non-contact injury uh, tears his ACL. And, you know, you couldn't be more devastated for an individual because how hard it took him to get to where he was to have the opportunity uh, to be able to compete and play. You know, th there's positives in everything and, and the positive for him was when COVID hit, um, moving the season to the spring allowed him to continue to rehab now to be in a position where he's at to help this football team be successful. So, you know, you, you love to see stories that, that end the way that this one has ended. And I know his has not ended because we still got a lot of football left, but, you know, he has gotten to the point where uh, he, he's going to be successful uh, because he's had to work to get there through a lot of highs and lows and, and couldn't be more prouder of an individual and how he's going about it. Before the spring injury, what did he, what was he able to do to develop as a receiver to put himself in position to be, to kind of be one of those starting outside guys? Yeah, I mean, I just think, uh, you know, confidence, understanding what to do, uh, continuing to, you know, take in, absorb what Coach Slaughter talks about, you know, and, and you see some guys that, that bam, they're able to, to, to catch on and it becomes easier right away. Or you see others that it takes time to develop. And I, and I think Coach Slaughter did a great job with, with KP as he came along to continue developing. And I think KP uh, had to earn the trust in, uh, in, in Coach Slaughter and myself. And, and, uh, and then that had to work the other way. And I think that's what you saw as he continued to, to move his way and progress towards where he was at the end of that 2019 season. Talk, talk to us about this, this number one jersey. It's kind of been, uh, it's, I guess it developed 2016, 2017. It's kind of been one of these things that's um, the receiver, the, the, a leader of the group, that, a, a guy that's really respected in that uh, receiver room. Uh, when Kendrick earned that jersey number earlier this spring, I mean, what did, what's the significance of that? Well, you know, it's funny how that, that jersey has, uh, you know, I guess you go back to Jazz first and when he, um, uh, you know, when he joined us and, uh, you know, and had the, the breakout year that Jazz had after setting out, um, after going through his own adversity, um, you know, becoming Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Um, and then as Jazz left to uh, pursue the NFL, all of a sudden you get a, a Quan Shorts that, uh, that, that had came in and and transferred and so initially it's looking like okay whoever transfers in is going to be you know immediately put in that number one jersey and, and I think what Quan did uh, you know setting the record for the most number of catches uh, over a hundred uh, for uh, for Northwestern and then you know as you move forward it's okay who's who's the next number one and uh, you know it was it was one that I think you saw the progress that KP made not only uh, the fall of 2019, but as he went through the spring, as he went through his rehab in the fall of 2020 to get to the point where, you know what, he has earned the opportunity to be a number one. And that's just not, you know, number one's just not uh, what you do uh, stat-wise. I mean, it's showing up each and every day uh, to go to work and, and practice and be the best that you can be. 
Um, you know, we, it's, it's been locked into a lot of catches in the past, but it's also been locked into guys that show up and go to work. Uh, you put on that jersey and you step on that field, there's expectations. And, uh, and, and KP has met those expectations as we uh, decided to put him in that number one jersey. Kind of in a, in a similar note of receivers that have had to uh, recover from injury, Gavin Landry. The last time he stepped on the football field, he caught a 54 touchdown yard touchdown pass and tore his ACL. Still finished the play after the injury, which is incredible to me. But how is how has he been able to come back? His injury was earlier than KP's, so maybe he would have been ready for the fall. But it seems like that extra time surely had to benefit Gavin too. Yeah, I mean, you look, uh, you know, when when Gavin on his first ta first touchdown catch of his career uh, tears his ACL. Uh, you know, devastating again because those guys, just like I talked about KP, had worked so hard to put themselves in position. You know, nothing was given to those two guys. Uh, nothing was saying, here, this is yours. You know, KP, here's your number one, or Gavin, here's your opportunity. It's those guys have worked and earned that. And uh, that's what's so devastating to watch as, as a coach whenever you see that. But the, but the way Gavin handled the situation, uh, he handled the situation and battled through just like he did to have that opportunity is the way he battled through this injury. And he worked uh, to, to make sure that if we would have played in the fall, that, that he would have had the opportunity to go out there and compete. You know, that's how he battled through his rehab. That's how he worked it. Uh, you know, the, the way he was able to push through that was really unbelievable uh, to get back to where he is. And, and so it's, uh, it's stories like that that – you see sometimes the end result, but I like to focus on how they got there because that's the story in itself with those two guys.